Okay, I'm going to show you how you uh, graph your Excel data or your Enzyme Lab data. So uh, here's our file. We have various tabs here that are the various trials that represent different concentrations of substrate that we gave the enzyme. So uh, let's start off making the first graph here and graph trial one stuff. So we're going to do the first 55 seconds. So I'm going to highlight down to 55 seconds and I'm going to note that it's on row 15. So it goes from row 4 to 15. Right? Then I um, skip all this individual group data and we look at the class data over at the very right. At this point, for me to be able to highlight that, I need to press down the control key and then I can highlight down to row 15 uh, like that. I go up here to insert. I click on it. I do not use line graph. That will cause you to get a, a weird looking graph. But I go down here to XY scatter plot. And in fact, I'm going to click on the little arrow. And I want to select the one where we connect the dots with straight lines. And so here is our graph. Um, in this case, we we'll want to add a title. So we're just going to highlight that. And this is going to be oxygen, so O2, oxygen evolved over time. Uh, the other thing that's missing, we want to put on some axis titles. Uh, down here, this is going to be time. See, this is going to be time and units with seconds. So we put that in parentheses. Over here, let's see if I can highlight all this. This is going to be oxygen evolved, so O2 evolved, and the units we measured in milliliters. All right, so that's pretty good. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit so we get the whole spreadsheet. Um, I also want to make sure that we're not, yeah, we want to zoom out a little bit on these um, other sheets. So zoom out. And we'll zoom out here too. So we're in the various trials. It's just easier to select the data if you're zoomed out. And then finally, we'll zoom out here too. All right, that's pretty good. All right, so we're back to our graph. Um, what we want to do now is we want to add the other trials to the same graph. And for us to do that, we want to go up here where it's kind of empty. You want to do a right click on the mouse and then move over here to select data. So you get this thing popping out and so it's telling you that one series is uh, already graphed and in fact I want to change the name on that. So I'm going to go up here and hit edit and then I'm going to call it trial one and then when I'm done with that we're going to hit OK. So for us to add more data we need to hit add and the next one I want to add is going to be trial 2. And then I go down here and I have to select the x values. And this is going to be the same on all of these because we want to go from 0 to 55 seconds. And the y values are now going to be on this tab down here, trial 2. So to select these values, I click on this arrow here. And then you get this thing. Now you go over and click on trial 2. And we're going to have the same values for the time. So I'm going to go down to 55, which was row 15. And when I'm happy with that, I click this little arrow here. And so now it's highlighted all that for me. The next thing I want to do is select the Y values. And those were the class averages. So I click on this arrow again. And this time I make sure I'm over here at trial 2. And then I go up and I highlight from 0 down to whatever 55, so that's row 15. So that should be about there. And you can also check, it says 15 right here, so I know I'm doing it right. And then you click on this, and then if everything is good, you hit OK. See, we have now added an extra uh, trial or um, it says trial, trail on this one is the spelling, so I should check. Here says trial, here says trail, so I should edit that to say trial. Oh no. Trial. All right. Okay. And I guess I forgot the two. Trial. 
I all do. Okay, so if I move this up a little bit, you can still see the graph. And you can see that we now have added, in addition to the blue, the orange. This is trial two. But we have six more to add. So we're going to just find a blank spot. Uh, or actually, we don't have to because this is already here. So we want to add another trial. So I'm going to add. And in this time, I'm going to call it trial three. I want to select my X values. And in this case, let me go here to trial three. And I'm going to select zero to 55. And then I hit the arrow. Next thing I want to do is... I'm going to move over um, and get the Y values. So I want to be on, make sure I'm on the tab of trial three. And I'm going to select the values down to row 15 for the class average. And I checked that it was 15 by looking there and it looks good. So then I hit OK. And now we get a third um, line on our graph. This is trial three. So I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to uh, do trial four. I'm going to select my X values by clicking on that arrow. I'm going to go to trial four. I'm going to highlight from zero to 55, so down to row 15. Then I'm going to select my wide um, data. And so in this case, I make sure I'm down here at trial four. And I highlight the last right column down to row 15. And I double check and it looks good. And then I hit OK. So now I should get a fourth line popping out, just like that in yellow. So that's trial four. All right, we'll add trial five. And I select my data. I'm going to go to trial five tab. I'm doing zero to, zero to 55. I'm happy with that. And I select my Y, I'm still on that, and I go from there, all right, and then hit OK. And we should get our next one, it's a dark blue in this case. And then <clears throat> the last one I have to add, I'm going to add the control. And I'm actually not going to call it trial 6, I'm going to call it control. So control, and then I'm going to select my data. And in this case, once again, uh, 0 to 55. And then I'm going to select the last column for trial 6, 0 to 55. And hit OK. And that one should end up very low, and it does in green. That green one, you can see it has an initial... Oh, actually, I'm going to take this and move it and I'm going to say OK. And so now I could actually zoom in on this so we can see it better. So what we have here is trial one in light blue, trial two in orange, trial three in gray, trial four in yellow, and trial five in dark blue. Control is green, and it's interesting. Remember, we in, um, used a syringe and we injected about five milliliters of um, you know fluid. It was a mixture, a solution mixed of hydrochloric or uh, hydrogen peroxide and water. And uh, notice this is five milliliters, and look at the control. There was no reaction, so we never got any more. Um, oxygen evolving from that but what this is indicating is that initial displacement of the five milliliters because you injected five milliliters of fluid into a reaction chamber it displaced five milliliters of air in that reaction chamber and so uh, you can see that pretty much all of them have a similar um, slope here and then they take off and then you can see the control did not have anything really going on because there was nothing to react with there was nothing in it it was just pure water so what this means is that <clears throat> at least we should ignore all the data after 10 seconds because that's fine this this data here is just that air bubble so where the reaction is really starting is in this region between 10 and 20 and um, the other thing I want to point out, when, when you're over in the, this region from 35 on, 
they look like they're flattening out. This is not saturation. What is happening here is that uh, the enzyme is just running out of substrate. And so here, you know, at low concentration for the blue, it's working away on the substrate and then it does, it starts to have less and less to do and so it flattens out. It just doesn't have any substrate anymore. And so we see it constant. Just like when we didn't have anything for the control, it was constant. Same thing over here. We see here we have enzyme uh, working away on hydrogen peroxide and we see oxygen evolve. But then it starts flattening out. It used up all the hydrogen peroxide. So this is, once again, this is not saturation. And in fact, what, for our second graph, we want to graph the rate of a reaction. And so rate is the slope. And so if we go up and look, remind ourselves what a function is, it's y equals mx plus b. This m is the slope, and that's rise over run. And so we're interested in finding out the rate of the reaction, which is actually the slope. And so going back to our first graph here, I'll zoom out a little bit. <clears throat> what we're interested in is finding out what is the rate of reaction in these different trials? And so for us to find out what the rate, we want to find the steepest part. We want to find where it's really cranking away the reaction. Not here where it kind of ran out of stuff to do, but when it's working at full speed for each of these trials, what is the rate? And so for us to do that, we need to do a tangent line or a best fit line in this region. And so um, you can tell Excel to do a best fit line. And if you have all this data, it will take it from down here at zero to 55. And so it will average, just kind of do a best fit line for all that data. But that would be inaccurate for us to figure out what the slope is on a, such a best fit line, because um, this isn't really representing our rate of reaction, because it's just running out of steam, so to speak. And this isn't representing our rate of reaction. That was just an air bubble. What we're looking for is right here, where it's really clearly going, where it's really steep, and right here, and right here, and here. And so um, let me just illustrate to make a best fit line. I can do a right click, and let's see, no, I can just click on the chart, a, a regular left, let me move it down a little bit. There, I get this plus line, I can do a trend line. And so if I hit on the trend line, you can tell it to get a trend line for trial one or five. Let's do five because that's easier to see. So that was the high concentration. Well, you can see that this trend line is including this crappy data here and this crappy data here. So that's not good. So what we need to do is make another graph. Um, so I'm going to remove this trend line. So I'm just going to remove that there. So what I want to do now is I want to move over here and I'm going to highlight the graph as you can see it's now and I'm going to hit control C and I'm going to go over here and hit control V. So you want to you want to uh, put this one into your lab book. In fact, we should do I should do one more thing before I copy it. We want to put a legend in. So in that case, you just go down here and you hit legend and here it says trial one and two and so on control is green so now you understand like which line is what now we can actually copy it so in this case i hit control c and then control v so for us to use the best fit line and also ask excel to uh, report a slope of the best fit line in this format y equals mx plus b so we can just take the whatever m excel gives us and figure out the slope we would first need to just kind of narrow this data, this chart down to the data range that we're really interested in. And so just kind of judging by the steepness of the slopes, for me, I think it'd be well worth to uh, take the interval from 10 seconds to 20, I would say probably 10 to 20 seconds is a good place to kind of put our trend lines. So in the second graph, remember we already have one over here. So in this graph, we want to edit the data. 
And so uh, to make life easier, we can go up and figure out 10 seconds to 20 seconds. Well, what rows in our time in our spreadsheet does that? So 10 is row six and 20 is row eight. All right, so let's go down here. We want to click on this and we're going to right click and we're going to go back to that select data. And so now we want to edit all of these. And so uh, where it says here 4 to 15, that's referring to rows 4 to 15, but we just said that we want from row 6 to 8. So I just go back and I change that 6 and I change this to 8. So now um, if you look over here, row 6 is time uh, 10 seconds and row 8 is 20. And so uh, we want to do it down here too because we only want to graph from six, row 6 to row 8. And so I'm going to hit OK. And um, if I close this down, you can see that we now change trial 1 to go from 10 to 20. And so we want to do this with all of them. So once again, I'm going to right click, I'm going to hit select data, and we already done trial one, so next one we want to edit trial two, we're going to go down here, we're going to hit six, and eight, I'm going to hit six, and change this to eight, okay, we want to do it with trial three, we want to edit it, we're going to go six, eight, six, and eight, and then okay, and then we're going to do it for trial four, so we'll just keep doing this, six and eight, and okay, and then trial five, almost there. So six, eight, eight, and down here we're gonna do six. All right. Um, the control one, I'm actually gonna remove that on this one because the, we used the control over here to just verify that this was just an air bubble and there's no reaction. So in this graph, we know that now, so I'm actually just gonna remove it all together and then hit okay. And so what you can see here now is uh, we have from 10 to 20 and now we can put in a best fit line here. And so I'm just gonna, um, sorry, I'm gonna go to hit a plus here and I'm gonna tell it to put in a trend line and I want to put one in here too, trend line. And I'm clicking on the line and I'm going to hit trend line. And then another one, trend line. And then the last one, trend line. And then over here, it kind of gets messy that it's doing those trend lines. So um, in, this, uh, in this box here, I'm just going to delete. Ooh. Uh, format. Nope. Um, so I'm just going to click and remove these. And nope, don't want that. I want this. And delete. And that. And there. All right. So now I got rid of that. The other thing we can tell the Excel to do is to add an equation to this trend line. So back, actually I'm going to zoom out again. Uh, here we go to trend line, but this time you want to hit that arrow and go to more options. And so we're going to do it for each. Uh, we want to make sure it's on linear trend line. And then I'm going to zoom out a little bit. We want to move down to the very bottom, display equation on chart. So um, if I do that now, I'm going to close this down. 
I'm going to show you guys up here we have y equals mx plus b. And so that m before the x is the slope. And the slope is the rate. So how slope is rise over run. So it's showing the rate that something is changing. In this case, the rate oxygen is evolving over some time unit. And so in this case, um, we want to move this equation over here. And then next, we want to click on the orange one. And we want to go here. We can tell it to put a trend line on, but we want to go the. We already have that, so we can do more option. We're gonna scroll so it's on linear here, but we're gonna scroll all the way down to display equation on chart. And so that's for trial two. And so that's our orange line, and so I'm just gonna move that over to the side and close that down. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Um, so we're going to make this a little bit bigger and we're going to make this a little smaller and then that way I can click on these and move them right next to each of these lines. So this was the orange one as trial two and then I'm going to do the next one, trend line. Oh, sorry, trend line. Oh, I just... Well, okay, I just messed that up big time. So, um, trend line, we're going to do linear and more options. We want to do linear, we're going to go down here and do display. And so here is our equation for trial one, the light blue. And then we want to do Um, trend line and we want to do more options and we want to have the linear and scroll down to display on chart so this I'm going to move over here so it's right next to the orange box we're going to do the next one and do that Okay, so we're going to select linear and move down to display equation on chart. We're going to move the equation next to the gray one so we can keep track of them. And we'll do more options, linear, and display equation on chart. And we'll move that next to the yellow one. And the last one and line, more options, this is by default selecting linear, and display equation on chart. All right, so now I can close down this box and um, we can zoom in. So here it's exp expressed as y equals m x plus or minus b in this case this is representing where it's going to intersect the y axis so this is the y intersect the m is the slope and slope is rise over run and so slope is also rate and so you can see that on trial one where we had very little substrate uh, concentration compared to uh, trial five, where we had the highest concentration of substrate, you can see that we're increasing the rate of reaction. So these numbers here are our slope. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna type these in, in a separate table over here, and then we're ready to make our second graph, where we're actually, um, we're, we're gonna graph the reaction rate um, and see how that changes as we increased concentration of substrate. So let me zoom out and let me make a table over here. So um, I'll put uh, trial one, trial two, uh, trial three, trial four, 
in trial five. Remember, we are not interested in the tri control tri trial six anymore. We already kind of proved the purpose of that. Um, over here, we're gonna put uh, slope. And in this case, for trial one, I'm just gonna go here and see that it's 0 0.425. And so I'm gonna type that in, 0 0.425. Um, trial 2 was the orange, that's 0 0.9667. So I'm just going to round that to three decimal points. So it's going to be 0 0.967. Enter. Trial 3 was the gray one. In this case, we have 1.73. And for trial 4, we have 1.97. And for trial uh, five, it's 2.26. All right, so now if I zoom out a little bit more, I can make my next graph. So the second graph where I'm actually gonna uh, graph the rates and show how they increase with uh, concentration because trial one had low concentration, trial five had a lot of concentration. So here I'm gonna highlight trial one, two, three, four, five, move over, but I can't highlight without pressing down the control key and then I can highlight and then I can go up here and tell it to insert. And I'm gonna do an X, Y scatter plot with connected dots. And that's what I did right here. And so in this case, we want to just kind of write some things. And so of course, we're going to put axis titles. And so down here, we want to put uh, trials. And then I'm going to put in, uh, in, in parentheses that this is uh, increasing concentration. So as the trials moves to the right here, as we get more and more trials, we also increase the concentration of uh, substrate. Maybe I should put that in there. Increasing um, substrate concentration, which was the hydrogen peroxide. And then over on this, I am gonna write a reaction rate, reaction rate and that's going to be as um, milliliters uh, oxygen O2 per seconds and my short title for the short title We're going to write reaction rate dependence, dependence on substrate concentration. Substrate concentration. All right. That's a descriptive. So what we're saying is how does the reaction rate change with increasing concentration? And um, this is where if you got saturation, you would see this flattening out. In this case, it seems like maybe almost, but this one is a little high, um, but it's definitely slowing down. And um, in an ideal world, we would have seen saturation, but in this case, um, it's not for sure. All right, so next I wanted to show you a fancier way than going through all of this um, first doing best fit line and then figuring out the slope. There's a function in Excel where you could actually tell it to just look at the data and uh, get the slope. And so in that case, I'll make a new table here. Uh, I'm gonna say figure out the uh, uh, reaction rate between or between um, let's do 10 seconds and um, 25 seconds 
So that's what we're going to look at. So in this case, um, you can just do equal slope and then you do parenthesis and this says known y versus known x's and so the y for 10 to sec 10 to um 25 seconds for trial one so let's see where i'm gonna zoom out i might have to i don't know if this is gonna work let's see if it won't let me really zoom out when i'm in the middle so i'm gonna do this i'm gonna just kind of delete this so I can actually zoom out so we can see hmm. I don't know what's happening here there too much okay so I'm gonna put trial one trial two trial three trial four and trial five so now i want to use this slope function and what i want to these are my x values time and these are my y values and so we're on the tab for trial one and so in this case i can just tell it to equal and then slope and then parenthesis and then it says known y's so these are my y's and i told it to do between 10 and 25 seconds so that's row six and 25 is row 9. So I'm going to go here to row 6, but these are my y values. So I'm going to highlight that down to row 9 right there. And then I want to hit a comma. And now I want to highlight row 6 to 9 over here on the left. And then I want to close the parenthesis. After that, you hit enter. And now you see it calculated the slope. All right, so I'm going to do equal slope. Oops. Come on. I'm going to zoom in here again. So in this case, we're on trial two. So I'm going to do equal slope parenthesis. And now I need to go to my trial two, and we're gonna start with the y values, which is oxygen evolved. And so um, remember the, the rows that we are aiming for, for 10 to 25 is six to nine, six to nine. All right, so let's go back slowly. So we're over here, I'm gonna to go to trial two, and I'm gonna to go to row six, Okay, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I want to hit comma. And now I want to do over here my x values. So that's going to be from 10 to 25, which is row six, seven, eight, nine. And then I want to close the parenthesis and hit enter. And so now it calculated the slope here. And then for trial three, equal slope parenthesis down to trial three. I want to go over here to row six through nine. I want to do comma. And then I want to go six to nine over here and close the parentheses and hit enter. And then same thing here, equal, slope, parentheses. We're on trial four, so I'm going to go to trial four. I'm going to go to row six, seven, eight, nine, comma, six, seven, eight, nine, close the parenthesis, enter. And then our last one, equal, slope, parenthesis. I want to go to trial, not trail, trial five. I'm going to go over here to row six, seven, eight, nine, comma, and then six, seven, eight, nine over here, close the parentheses and enter. And so uh, I can format these by highlighting and I go up here and tell it I only want uh, three decimal points. So there. You can see they're pretty similar to the ones we had here. Um, and 
you can choose other um, intervals like for example we could um, do here between uh, 10 and 20 seconds and I'm going to show you the fast way to if you want to if you want to graph this and mess around with things um, you could go back in here and go up and put dollar signs at each of these if you put a dollar sign before the H it means that it's always going to refer to that column which the columns have letters and then if you put a dollar sign in front of the six it's always going to refer to that row row six and so if I just stick dollar signs everywhere here um, it's always going to refer to those numbers and I can uh, drag around my uh, boxes so to speak so what happens is if I move this one does not have dollar signs where it needs so if I actually is drag that to there let's see to there ah it won't work if I copy that and I put it here, it's going to give me the same number. If I copy this that does not have dollar signs, copy that, and I do this, it will give me divisible by zero because it's referring now, it's scooting over a row and it doesn't have anything in this row. So basically my point is, if you copy with a dollar sign, it will always refer to the original and then it's easy to edit. If you don't have it, it will shift. So if you're referring to this in your original data and you, sh and you drag it, it now thinks you're referring to this column. And so um, what we're going to do here, I'm just going to get out of this. I'm going to delete this. And um, I'm going to show you that because we have dollar signs, we can easily change the rows. And it's still going to refer to the correct column. So in this case, we are at 10 to 20 seconds. And that is row 6. And 20 is row 8. And so what I can do here in this box is just change it from, that's going to be, oh, what did I say, 6 to 8. That's what we're going to have. So we're only going to change where it says 9 to an 8. And then here we're going to change it to an 8. And when I hit enter, you should get the same, no, not the same, what happened? 6 to 8, 6 to 8, and... Six to nine. Oh, that's because we changed. But it should be the same as this number down here. That's what I confused myself about. So up here in this box, we're referring for between 10 and 25 seconds. Then I changed the formula. And here we're looking at 10 to 20 seconds. And so we're figuring out the slope for this trial. And that was the same as we had down in this example. And so this was just a different way using this formula to get that slope versus this number down here we got from the values on the graph. So it's two different ways to figure out slope. So um, the next thing I want to show you is that we can also graph these real quick. So I'll highlight that. I'll hit control and I'll highlight this. Whoops, too much. We'll do we do that we'll highlight those rows and those rows and then I'll do insert I'll do my XY scatter with connected dots and it looks slightly different from this one that's because here we had these slopes and in this case over here we are using these slopes. And so those slopes are not the same as that. That's why we get two different ones. But in this case up here, because we're able to quickly, if we rewrite the formulas with the dollar signs, um, you can quickly play around with, um, you can do it for all of them. And then um, when I click here, you see it's highlighted like this. If you do this work with the dollar signs and you set up different intervals, you can quickly just drag this and it will graph. But because I didn't do the four other ones, we only get one dot. 
but that's a quick way to kind of play around with the data to see if you have an effect or not. So this uh, second graph, I'll go back to the original we did before using, um, put it up there, and then we'll click on this one and drag this down a little bit. And so if we go back to this, so this is referring to this data here, that these slopes we got over from this graph. Um, so you can play around and see if you were to get saturation. So in this case, unfortunately, it does not look like we have saturation. Uh, not yet. It's possible if we had kept going, uh, we would have seen it here. But um, a suggestion maybe for our next semester is that we make the enzyme extract a little bit weaker. And in that case, we might actually see some saturation. All right.